Um, y'all are really making me recap a freaking wedding after I've done all the weddings already. You're making me recap another wedding at the end of the mother freaking season and I'm mad as hell. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Let's get started. This is episode number 14 and the name of this episode, without me even looking it up, I remember, is New Groom Who Dis. So Becca and Austin are going to Philadelphia to meet up with his family and they will not be missed this episode. Boy voyage, be nice if you were gone for the rest of the season, but I know you're not. But enjoy your trip. Goodbye. So guys, we are finally at Chloe and Michael's wedding day. When I tell you that this episode was a filler episode, you're going to be very bored. Not with me. I'm going to try to make it interesting, but it's not. I didn't have much to work with. I'm going to try to make it interesting. Michael is very hopeful about everything that's going to happen. He's trying not to let that, you know, little situation where his other bride didn't show up. He's trying not to let that affect his confidence. Okay, Claire, you're looking nice there. Love your makeup. Claire yaps on about being there to support Michael and how she's happy to be there. Pretty much all of the couples were invited to this wedding, but of course, as you know, as I said at the top of this video, Becca and Austin won't be there because they'll be in Philly. All right, I try to be impartial and non-biased in my recaps, but when I really don't like a character, it comes off in my recaps and I'm really, really sorry in advance. I'm really sorry, okay? Everybody's getting ready for this wedding and here's Chloe with her friends, her relatives. It's just everything she says sounds so rehearsed and scripted. It's just like, I'm really hoping that he's the best man of my dreams and all this bull crap. And trust me, by me not telling you exactly what she said, you've missed absolutely nothing, I promise. So Chloe says to her friends and family, her bridesmaids, maid of honor, that this is the first time that they're seeing her at this level of commitment and she goes into why she's a former perfectionist. Chloe, you're not fooling anyone and girl, that's just your personality. That's just who you are. Just embrace it and stop with this former title. And um, I don't know how much they paid you to act on this um, program, but uh, whatever they paid you was not enough. Girl, you really putting on the performance of a lifetime here. Chloe was talking to her, um, her uh, bridal party here and she's like, I hope Michael likes old dogs. Girl, you talking about yourself? Because <laughs> she actually has an old dog. But um, girl, you had me laughing. Michael has a new groomsman here. I'm sorry, I forgot his name. He basically wishes Michael luck and says that, you know, knowing what kind of person he is, he should be fine. And Michael, as I said, he's very hopeful and he's just ready to, uh, you know, meet this mystery woman chloe is over here looking like the bride of frankenstein what the hell is wrong with her makeup that color is not for her i'm no makeup artist but her face and neck are two different colors i don't think it's supposed to be that y'all really did her dirty on this uh freaking show so now i'm just excited for that emotionally available kind big-hearted wonderful man Alrighty. Michael has decided that he's going to wear a pink paisley suit i don't know if that's the right pattern if it's not Put it in the comment section what it really is. Thank you. Um, don't really love it, but hey, I'm not the groom. It's not my wedding. And I mean, he did what he wanted to do. Okay. But he basically said that, you know, to hell with not outshining the bride. I'm going to wear what I want to wear this time. No, Michael is yapping and yapping. And you will hear the word yapping a lot in this review. Why? Because that's all they do on this episode. It's a lot of over talk, a lot of talk talk. And it's one thing that Michael and Chloe have in common. These two people can talk like nobody's business. I do not know why y'all doing so much damn talking. But I am pretty sure the producers push for you guys to say as much as you possibly can to fill up the two hours which that's a whole nother story in itself because I don't understand why this damn show needs to be a full two hours every week. So Chloe's biggest concern is that Michael isn't going to want her and she's hoping for a lifetime of joy. And I notice she's over here talking about, oh, you know, I want us to be 80 and girl, just relax yourself. You're, you're painting it on a little thick now, okay? So here come Orion and Brennan and child, I'm already over it and it's not even what? 30 minutes into the show right now. So Michael is asking these two advice about marriage, the two most terrible, lousy husbands in the entire franchise. And you're asking these two for advice. 
I think Michael asked the question, like, what does he have to look forward to in marriage? And I'm pretty sure both of these people here would respond misery. But they're trying to be encouraging, so they keep it positive and they keep it light. Chloe, your personality, Miss Perfection, does not say you're the type of woman that will put on some converse is under a wedding dress. I know the producers told you to do that. Ain't nobody stupid over here. Chloe is so excited to meet her, quote, person. The gift giving commences. Michael gets her a little diamond necklace. And I mean little, but who am I to judge? I ain't never had a diamond in my life. Okay, I'm just saying, I never have. Do diamond chips um, count? Anyway. And she gets him some cufflinks that he out, you know, that he immediately puts on. And now, finally, it is time for the wedding. Now we are finally at the wedding ceremony, and Michael is at the altar. Now Michael is feeling very apprehensive, concerned about what Chloe may think of him as far as how he looks. So now, Chloe, she suddenly cannot breathe. She's gonna puke. Oh no, everybody. Um, she's gonna throw up. She says she put every little ounce of faith with her whole heart. Her friend tells her that she can't imagine that Michael doesn't fall in love with her. And I don't know if you guys got the memo, but this show is called Married at First Sight. This show is not called Love at First Sight. I think you guys are a little confused. So now the bridesmaids walk in and as you can see, their, the color of their dresses match Michael's, which is pretty cool. So they come in, he greets them. Hi, how you doing? You know, Michael says, you know, after he says hello to everyone, he asks if the wind destroyed his hair. This is Lauren's facial expression. And your girl is over it. Michael, she's over your ass. She's tired of you. She thinks you're corny. And as nice as Michael comes off, he came off so cornballish. I'm really sorry. I'm always making up words on this freaking channel. But he came off so corny and so like, it's okay to be weird, damn it. I know I'm weird. Y'all already know I'm weird. And a lot of you are weird too. And I don't have a problem with you being different or being strange or whatever. And if this is his personality, then it is what it is. And a lady offers him some hairspray. And literally, this is what happens next. And You're really going to think I'm super high maintenance. <laughs> Brennan asks the bridesmaid in front of him, what do we think? He says, are you worried? And she says, for her. So Chloe's over here nervous and crying, not a tear in her freaking eyes. She gets encouragement from her mom and eventually she joins Michael at the altar. Okay, so now we have the customary meeting and greeting, meet and greet and the music the corn corn ball corny music that lifetime loves to play us so as you know for all of the weddings they always do this thing where the officiant tells a little information that the family gave about the bride and the groom and i will tell you this there's really nothing too much that was said the only thing we learned in all of those were that they're both pet lovers and that is all and now, ladies and gentlemen, the acting debut of Chloe, what's her last name? I want to say Stevens, but I don't think that's her last name. But anyway, I'm not looking it up. So now they read their vows. Finally standing in front of you means the world to me. I got to say a little more of what she said because this crap was so scripted and funny. I have to say it. So part of Chloe's vows said this right now in this moment. I look into your eyes and you feel like home. <laughs> who the hell wrote this? <laughs> who? I want to know who wrote this so you can be fired because that was so freaking corny. So Chloe says that Michael seems like a good man. I personally don't know how you can tell somebody's going to be a good man after only 10 minutes, but what do I know? Michael feels the same about Chloe, says that she's basically confident, she's intelligent, she's beautiful, etc. But honestly, I just think if this is real, that is, I think that a lot of this excitement and lovey-dovey talk is just all about the expectation. I don't think it is what it actually is. I think it's because they're both being optimistic. And since they're being optimistic, of course, all the lovely things are going to flow out of their mouths, especially on the wedding day. I mean, come on. So I'm not going to go into every single little detail of what was said, but what I just said, the lovey-dovey stuff is pretty much all they were saying over and over again. All right. And Chloe says that she was excited to meet the man that the experts thought was her person. So Michael lets her know three things he wanted in a wife. He says that he thinks that she possesses these things. And now they're talking about their pets and 
Michael thinks that they gel together and they vibe very well. He tells Chloe that some of the folks at the wedding were actually involved in this marriage journey with him. And he says that the reason why they were there to support him, and you know the rest, guys. And he goes into why she ended up having to marry him now in the middle of the season, okay? And lets her know that the first bride just was not feeling it. And Michael says that he was supposed to be married at first sight along with the rest of the group, but it didn't happen that way. But he assures Chloe that their journey is theirs and theirs alone. He's not a broken man. He is whole, okay? And Chloe says, what is meant for us will never, ever. I feel like I feel like I should put on a voice when I say her lines. But anyway, who, who talks like that in real life? So now you have the failing and failed relationship remaining folks. I don't know what else to call these people. They're out here talking. They're out, outside talking in a group about how cute the bride was and how... You know, they look like they go together well, blah, blah, blah. Lauren, you looking real cute. I think I said that earlier, but I'm gonna say it again. I just love how you do your natural hair. It's very riveting. They talk a lot about how they seem like they like each other, Chloe and Michael. And Emily says that she thought the vows were a bit vanilla. <laughs> she said she was expecting more from Michael. Emily, you know what's vanilla? Your husband, who doesn't know how to move his mouth. He has no flavor. He has no conversation. He's nothing. You got the nerve to be critiquing vows. I don't know how much more spicy or interesting you wanted the vows of two people who never met each other prior. I don't know what you expected them to be, young lady. M Michael and Chloe come out to meet the couples. And Chloe, if you knew how many of these couples were not working right now, <laughs> I promise you, sorry, I promise you, you would take those freaking converses and you would be running the other way, lady. They're out here pouring champagne and greeting each other and introducing each other and they give a toast to the new husband and wife and Claire introduces herself and says my husband's not here today girl I thought y'all split why are you even referring to him like y'all still together and y'all still happy Claire cut it out she says you'll get to meet him Claire and what I guess I'll see you next lifetime what in what lifetime Claire is she gonna meet Cameron child if you don't get the hell out of here it, chloe says it's nerve-wracking being the new girl but she's excited to get a feel of how many of these marriages are failing wait <laughs> you know what this is what happens when you write notes you write notes and you feed it to ai and you tell ai i need you to summarize my shit i did not use ai for every single thing sometimes things are hard to put into words and that's when I'll get a little help, okay? But other than that, these are all my words. Chloe says it's nerve wracking being the new girl, but she's excited to get a feel for what being married to a stranger has done for them. Do you know what it's done for them, Chloe? It's brought them misery, it's brought them hell. It's brought them literally to the depths of hell, okay? Girl, if you only knew, all right? But you'll know soon enough, I'm pretty sure of it. Michael lets the crew know how, you know, he told Chloe about the runaway bride mishap. Chloe says that she was nervous all day, but the moment she saw Michael in that pink suit, she knew it was going to be a make or break moment. Chloe says earlier, it's going to be epic. This situation is going to be epic. It's going to be great. Who are you trying to convince, Chloe? Yourself? Because you're overacting in every scene. Anyway, now they go inside. They're doing wedding pictures. Chloe is gushing about how warm Michael is. I mean, warm, not by touch, but warm, like a warm personality. And she says that it feels organic now they go outside to take pictures and then she asks michael about his tattoos and many of his tattoos are in homage to his family and um, michael says that he feels affirmed because now the situation was positive and it was more so than his last experience and he says that they've already began to develop an intimate relationship relationship wise maybe is what he means and now everybody is going to the reception lifetime i'm getting sick and tired of you and i'm gonna call you out every time i get on this damn video why did you sit orion and lauren together i'm not saying they're like i'm not saying they're like tom and jerry or anything <laughs> but that show is funny as hell why did y'all have to sit them together like please i'm sick of y'all i'm tired of y'all the guests in the reception are tinkling the glasses and if any of you have watched like four weddings or any of these wedding shows you already know when they tinkle the glasses when the audience i call them the audience okay when the guests tinkle the glasses at the reception they want the freaking bride and groom to kiss 
I swear to God, if any of you listening to my mother freaking video right now, if you come to my wedding and you do that at my wedding, I am literally going to have Travis or whoever the hell our security is escort you out because we're not doing that. Chloe says, cheers to happy marriages. That ship has sailed for all the other couples, I'm telling you right now. You should just, you need to just say cheers over your own marriage at this point. Y'all the only one that got a little hope, okay? So now we're at the table with the other couples. And here we go with old Ryan running his big old mouth. Listen, why is he here? Oh, Ryan ended the marriage. He should not be allowed on the show anymore. I'm getting tired of this. I'm getting tired of this backtracking with Lauren and Orion. Y'all did all these flashbacks with Orion and Lauren. I'm over it, girl. Boy, whoever, I'm over it. Anyway, Orion says to Lauren, you know, if you want, you know, before this night is over, you know, we can have a little conversation. Lauren's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. And uh, I don't have any animosity towards you. And Orion just proceeds to keep talking anyway. Where is Sandman Sibs when you need him? I'm really And somebody needs to come and pull Orion off this damn show. I'm so tired of hearing him talk. So anyway, Orion goes into how he was in therapy and the therapist told him that he's stubborn and Orion, nobody cares. Your marriage is over. To start the conversation, he was like, so what are you doing right now? How is everything going? And Lauren's like, oh, I'm doing yoga. I'm doing meditation. And he's like, okay, how about emotionally? And she's like, up and down it's up and down how about orion it's none of your damn business that's what you should have told him lauren i mean i mean that's what i would have said it's none of your freaking business so anyway like i said they get into this conversation about his therapist blah 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 yakety smackety all right so at the end of this conversation explain to me why orion has the nerve to ask lauren for a hug i'll give you a punch in the eye and i'll give you a shiner that's what i'll give you fool he's talking about can I get a hug? You want a hug to make you feel better about how nasty you treated Lauren. Oh, Ryan, go to hell. Anyway, I mean, ladies, sincerely go to hell with you know what kind of draws on. Now, Chloe is here with the other ladies and Michael is with the guys. Orion asks Michael how he's feeling about all of this. And Michael says what happened in the past surprisingly did not wear him down. He's just focused on that day. Lauren asks Chloe if she's enjoying her wedding so far. And Chloe says after hearing what happened with bride number one, she's concerned as to why the experts didn't see her as the first choice. I'd be concerned about that too. Just saying. The way Lauren was looking at Chloe, though, <laughs> Lauren, you got the eyes today, girl. Emily thinks that they seem like a good match and says everything happens for a reason. Claire mentions how committed Michael is to having gone through that twice. Michael seeks advice from the two loser husbands, Orion and Brennan. And the girls encourage Chloe to just be herself and everything will work out. So Michael asks the two bozos about their impression of him and Chloe. Brennan and, and, and Orion, they were just like, oh, they, you know, everybody pretty much likes Chloe, okay? It's cake cutting time and they cut the cake. Michael's like, how oh, this is his favorite part. And Michael accidentally drops some cake on Chloe's sleeve. And this is what happens next. Would you like to eat this? <laughs> So now you have to stay in a dress that has his spit all over it from licking your sleeve. That was disgusting. So Claire gets all sentimental and she says she's feeling sentimental because, you know, Cameron and her were there and now they're not there. So she decides she's going to walk off and call Cameron. She says she hasn't spoken to him all day, but you know what? Why not give him a call? You know, the producers probably push her to do it, but why not? So she calls, leaves a message talking about she wishes he was there. He does not answer. Lauren asks, how is Cameron? She says, girl, I wouldn't know he didn't answer and I ain't spoke to him all day. So Chloe's friend Cesar asks Michael how he's feeling and he's feeling pretty good. He's hoping that his demeanor is showing that he's super happy. Chloe chats with Michael's groomsmen and praises his style she's like i like his style and the funniest thing that she said let me go i mean if i could find my original freaking notes chloe was like when he came in there and his pink suit and his earrings on and his heart shape cut out of his head i was just like girl stop it okay michael is talking to chloe's family and friends and again he shares that he was jilted at the altar with the other bride to them I'm like michael stop telling everybody edgar asks chloe like how she feels about hearing about bride number one. And Chloe actually says that she's glad the experts kept her in the dark and didn't tell her because she wouldn't have she wouldn't have been down with that. I thought you were dedicated. I thought you were committed. 
Edgar asks Chloe if she wants kids. Chloe says no, she prefers fostering. She just wants to foster. I did not hear the word adoption come out of her mouth. I just assume when people say fostering, eventually they're going to adopt, but I do not want to put words in her mouth. So she did say she would foster, but she doesn't want children of her own. Like Carla, who is Chloe's mom, asks Michael how he feels about kids. Michael said that he never really thought about having children. He never really had a desire to have kids, but if somebody that he loves and he's with wants to have children, then however they have children, which is whether it's having them naturally, fostering or adoption, he said he's down for it. And so now Emily and Brennan are reminiscing about their wedding venue. First of all, Brennan was not reminiscing at all. Emily was. Brennan was like, oh, I've been here a million times. And I'm saying to myself, what the hell is he talking about? And I'm just assuming, oh, he's just been to a lot of weddings. He said, I've been here time and time again. It just didn't click with me. Oh, wait a minute. This was our wedding venue. Brennan, you're just so rude. You get on my nerves. Anyway, Brennan says, then he goes on to say that he's excited for Michael and Chloe's honeymoon. Um, Brennan, are you going to be under the bed? Like, what? <laughs> I don't understand why you would be excited for their honeymoon. And Emily's like, um, why? And he's like, oh, you know, to hear about the honeymoon and what went on. For some reason, Emily, you still think that there was a spark, and I keep holding on to that spark, and that's what keeps me optimistic. Girl, you need to be realistic. You need realistic optimism. Being optimistic with something that is a dead end isn't going to get you anywhere, okay? It's just going to keep you delusional. Everybody's getting down on the dance floor. They're dancing. Emily, Miss Party Girl, she's out here getting her life on the dance floor, which annoys Brennan for some reason. Brennan, you're boring. Emily accidentally breaks the glass. No big deal. Somebody comes and cleans it up. And Brennan literally walks off and, and he looks extremely annoyed and he says he's freaking done for the night so at the end of the night y'all know everybody has their little sparklers up outside and michael and chloe ride off to the hotel they both feel positive about the wedding they both feel positive about each other all right they arrive at the hotel what do they do guys what do they do in every freaking season of this freaking show they come inside the hotel they admire their surroundings and what happens next the groom removes the wedding dress he takes off her dress. She's wiping off all this uh, Bride of Frankenstein makeup off of her face, okay? They didn't have any kind of deep conversation, nothing. They got in bed. I'm assuming you guys showered. I'm going to always assume that you guys showered because you know what? This show doesn't show us everything. And I be joking when I say they didn't even bathe. They just got in bed. They climbed into bed. And, Michael, you could have you could have found something a little more appealing to wear to bed, buddy. I mean, some silk pajamas, something. I mean, it's your wedding night. Anyway, I guess he means it when he says he's going to be himself. And he had draws the color of his suit. He wasn't playing, <laughs> he, he wasn't playing with, that, with that pink suit. He had draws to match, child. So they just got in bed, gave each other a kiss, faced the wall, blew out all the candles, and went to bed. And that is the end of my mother freaking review. I hope you guys appreciate me every, every single time I do a video. Because this, at this point, is straight torture. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye. That is the end of this recap. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you laughed. I hope you cried. I mean, I don't hope you cried. I just hope you got some comments to give me in that comment section so I can see what you guys think. Because I, I don't want to just post videos and see views. I actually want to know what you guys think about this. But anyway... Thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.